But let me, let me, let me tell you this. There is no such thing as a perfect time to get married because you are and frankly should always be in a constant state of building. You should always so be in good. a state of transition, always be in a state of change and growth and learning. So and so if you feel like, let me get myself together, then I'll get married, Oof. that's never going to happen. Hey Matt, you a fool for this one? While we're building these businesses and building these dreams and manifesting all our desires, stress and anxiety is a part of that. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is the definition of love? I have been an adult since I was 16. I definitely feel like I've transitioned into a better place mentally. And another part of self-care, um, self-pleasure, orgasms, they're healing. So Absolutely. that part Gee. is important. No captain, we a o about to get a play go. Pull up to the table, let's go. Yo, so one of the things I'm gonna keep it about with you all today um, on the show is I think we all battle with comparing ourselves with other people, with other things, with other people's success, you know? Um, last month, I took a break from social media because I, I sometimes battle with that. I'm gonna say sometimes I do battle with it, you know? Um, as successful as I am, I still look at other people and be like, dang, I could do that. Um, and one of the things that keeps us broke, one of the things that makes us go spend unnecessary money, some of the things that makes makes us really uh, stay single or get out of this relationship or do things, is because we're looking at other people, at what they have, what they're doing, what they're not doing, and then it kills our joy, it kills our peace. And man, one of my good friends, I have been, I've known her for a while. Uh, she travels around the world, just really speaking the word of God, but then also really just serving people. And she wrote a book um, talking about killing comparison. I said, hey, yo, sis, you gotta get to the, you gotta get here. So we can have a conversation about it because I think we, we talk about money at the table, right? But I'm also, I also wanna talk about what's preventing us from having, making more money. What's preventing us from getting out of debt? What's, what's, what's pushing us to spend more money? And that's comparison. So I'm really excited. But before we get to my guest today and before we talk about the book, there's two quick things, man. If you are watching me and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. You know, hit the subscribe button on the podcast. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And if you really enjoy our shows, help me by really hitting that thumbs up. So that way, you guys, we can spread this message um, and we can really impact a lot more people. But man, we are almost at about 400,000 plus subscribers on just YouTube alone. I'm like, wow, we are growing. Uh, but I wanna get to a half a million by the end of this year. And if y'all, let's get to a million, shoot. You know, let me just speak it in the atmosphere. So hit subscribe, hit that um, thumbs up so we can continue uh, blessing and serving people. And then also too, do not forget that I really want us by the end of this year to have a fully funded emergency fund, all right? 80% of us live in paycheck to paycheck. And how do we get out of debt and how do we make sure we do not get back into debt is to make sure that we have a fully funded emergency fund. So I'm not gonna tell you to do something and not give you the resources to do that. So I partnered with my friends over there at Prize Pool, and uh, they're gonna give you a free savings account to where you can get a debit card with a savings account. They're gonna give you like 0.3% uh, on your interest rate. They're gonna also give you a ticket for every $1 you have saved. And at the end of the week, they do grand prizes. At the end of the month, they do huge from 10 to $20,000 grand prizes. And I'm telling you, I absolutely love them. Um, but as we're walking through that journey of getting out of debt, as we're walking through the journey of building wealth, one of the key ingredients is making sure you have a fully funded savings account. And from 2020, we learned, it's not a matter of if an emergency is gonna happen, it's just a matter of when. And I want you to be prepared. We have a recession. It's, it's coming. It's going to happen. Um, and so I want to help you get prepared. So listen, if you got $5, if you got $500, um, I don't care what you have. Go over to Prize Pool. Join me. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings. Open up a savings account. Start thinking about the future so we can make sure when you get out of debt, you stay out of debt. And that's another way to build wealth. Uh, but one of the things that is keeping us in debt is comparison. Um, and I'm excited because my sister, um, who is a national best-selling author, a uh, guru in the whole social media space, she works with Meta, uh, she's traveled around the world, she's serving churches, getting them into this space. She is a pastor, 
Okay, her and her husband are, are doing amazing things in the great state of Florida, uh, but she's not here to talk about that. She's here to talk about this amazing book um, that is coming out next month called Killing Comparison. Reject the lie, keyword there, lie. Reject the lie, you aren't good enough and live confident in who God made you to be. Not who humans say you should be, but who God. My sister, Nona Jones is at the table. It's about time, yo. It's time, man. Yo, I'm sitting here like, Nona. I've been on the wait list, man. No, been you've been too busy list. for me. like, can I please come on your show? And he's like, I, I, can't, I can't take it right now. I can't take it right now. <laughs> yo, I'm sitting here like, man, I'm, I'm just pumped. You know, so excited What you've here. been doing over the last, shoot, five years that I've known you, man, you, you're on the road impacting lives. Oh, God is good, man. He really is. Just enlarging territory for his glory. So I'm just glad to be a part. Yo, before we get into, to, I got like three main questions I really want to get to, and then I'm just going to let God just take the conversation where it goes, right? Cool. Uh, who is Nona Jones, right? Who is, mm -hmm. who is the woman that everyone sees? She got the blue check mark. She's all over here. She's working over there. But who, who, who is Nona outside of the, the limelight? Yeah, so um, that's an easy question for me to answer okay. because it has nothing to do with position, title, any of that. Yeah. Um, I am fundamentally, I'm a statistically improbable product of the grace of God. Mm. I mean, just if you look at the statistics, um, I was born to a mother who didn't want to have me. My mm. father passed away at a very young age. I was two. He was 36. Wow. Um, sexual abuse, physical abuse for the majority of my childhood. I recently took, there's an assessment, it's called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Assessment. And I'm gonna write it out. It's called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Assessment. And okay. what it does is it um, it's a survey and it basically tells you the probability that a given child under certain conditions will end up you know, delinquent, dead, pregnant, addicted to drugs, et cetera. It's a scale of zero to 10. Mm -hmm. And I took that thing and I scored an eight. An eight? An eight. So I should be in jail or dead, uh, should be drug addicted. And yet here I am sitting at the table with you. And uh, so wow. fundamentally, fundamentally, that's who I am. Everything you've been through. Yeah, man. The world says mm -hmm. you should be dead or just way off. Correct. Yeah. But Correct. God. But God, literally. Married. Married. With yep. kids. With children. I'm 18 years in the game. 18 years in the marriage? 18 years. I got married a month out of college. People thought I was either pregnant or crazy, but I was neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, two boys. They're nine and 12. And man, when I tell you, I don't look like what I've been through. No. It's the grace of God. You don't look your age. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Married for 18 years? How old are your kids? <laughs> my boys are 9 and 12. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so we spent about about six years kind of, you know, Yo, that was... know each other and yeah. experiencing life. And yeah. would if you if you had to go back to the very beginning of your marriage, would you have kids earlier or do no. you like how y'all did that? Oh, yeah, it was great because, see, once children arrive, they're like vacuums. They basically suck up all the attention, yes. all the energy. Yes. Um, but I think we laid a really firm foundation in our marriage to figure out who we are, what we wanted out of life yeah, yeah. without having to also figure out children and what they needed. So, yeah, yeah I would definitely do it, do it the exact same way. Man, y'all, <laughs> I, I'm I'm scared, you know, because I mean, I know, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be forty in a couple of years. What you are you what waiting saying? on? Right, right, right. Uh, you know, I mean, just right. let's just let's just be explicit. What we what we waiting on for for? I mean, I mean, I, I just I just want to you know Here find we go. the right one. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I'm at, I'm finally at a season mm -hmm. in my life to where I'm ready to to intentionally date. Okay, okay. And when okay. I say intentionally date. I, I went through a huge transition last year. Of course, you know that. yeah, I know. I called yeah. you, you know, right around that season, and I was like, all right, I, I shouldn't do it right now mm -hmm. because I was mm -hmm. building. Yeah. Now though, I'm like, okay, I'm ready. But let me let me let me tell you this: there is no such thing as a perfect time to get married because. Mm. You are and frankly should always be in a constant state of building. You should always so be in good. a state of transition, always be in a state of change and growth and learning. So and good. so if you feel like, let me get myself together, then I'll get married, Oof. that's never going to happen. Oof. And so frankly, it shouldn't happen. And right. typically by the time people feel like, all right, now I'm ready, typically they're in a state of decline. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so I would say, don't don't let that be the hindrance. Don't let that be the hindrance. You gotta be scared. You want to build with somebody. You want to learn. And here's the thing: 
marriage is the process of two becoming one. one. What that means is if you think you got it all figured out, yeah. your spouse is going to work some stuff out of you that you thought you figured out. Right. So you need to be ready to accept that. Like, don't go into the marriage thinking, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. It's right. like, no, this is who I am today. Right, right. But I am willing to build with you and right. become something else. I'm there. Okay. I'm All there. right. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm there. I've made excuses in the past. I ain't going to lie. I think some of them were not excuses. They were valid reasons that I need to seek therapy for and mm -hmm. just get some wisdom through. And the other parts was, yeah, I was trying to fine-tune certain things that I could have done with the world. Mm-hmm. 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 But. And there are just so many options, right? You know. Believe it or not, no. Really? Everyone thinks that. That's what I keep hearing men say is, ah, I'm going to settle down when there's just so many options. I think when I hear men say that, I don't think they're really stable in what they really, what mm, they really desire. Now that is true. Because I can see that. Are there many are there many options when it comes to women? Yes. yes. But are there many options to the woman that I need and desire mm. in my life? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And mm -hmm. so I think that's the problem. And, you know, but again... I think now that I'm intentional, it is That's easy good. for me to date. It is easy for me to, you know, to be like, all right, cool. Now it's just about really just identifying who am I aligned with. Yeah. And then go yeah. from there, you know. So yeah. that wasn't planned. <laughs> <laughs> but it was necessary. It really was. Apparently. It was really it really was. I love I love <laughs> I love my tribe really getting to know like the personal yeah. side of my guests. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because you know, you'll come on. We could drop so much wisdom, but I really want them to know, like, yo, Nona is a very cool, down to earth person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. And, and y'all need to follow Nona because she, you know, <laughs> you're gonna see her family. She just got her beautiful home. I'm like, I was like, yo, Nona, winning that home is beautiful. Thank you. You got that last year or is it this um, year? We moved in in January, but um, we bought it in December. Yeah. In December. Yeah, yeah. Our Kate previous Kennedy. home is our our rental property now. So. Rental property now. Mm -hmm. So you, so you're an entrepreneur. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Multiple you're in a real companies. estate. You're into the social space. Mm -hmm. You have your own known a business. Yeah. Yeah. You have your own church with your, your husband. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, so yep. Author, speaker. I have three companies plus we have rental property. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on a and full-time at Meta, which That's a lot of I'm people, saying. yeah, a lot of people don't, they're like, what are you like a consultant? I'm like, no, no, wow. full-time. I have a, a team and all that. Wow. So yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I got to ask this question. Mm -hmm. You're out here winning in life. It's, it's called spade to spade. You got the blue check mark. You, 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 you work with Meta. I mean, come on, like, this is Meta, you know, this is, this is Mark. <laughs> This, this this is the man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're preaching. You've preached on every major stage when it comes to the, the church world. Mm. You're respected in the, the business world. You know what I'm saying? You're a best-selling author. You're an executive. You got a staff. You got a team. You got a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, where did this this book come from? Like, why are why are you writing a book? about com comparisons and insecurities when mm -hmm. you're successful. Yeah. You got it all. You got, you got a husband. You got a kid. You got your dream home. Like, insecurities? Mm -hmm. Can I ask a personal question? Please do. Are you writing this book because you've battled insecurities with all your success? Oh, man. Straight up. Like, I. so this book is not meant to be like theological medicine or, you know, some sort of like sterilized study of, you know, insecurity. No, this is my personal story, my personal journey. And the reason I wrote it mm -hmm. is because I do believe people look at all those things. They look at all the boxes on the resume and they're like, you have to be the most secure person on earth. Mm -hmm. And yet um, I was forced to confront just how insecure I was um, mm -hmm. back in 2020, like right when the pandemic spun up. Um, I had a full calendar of speaking engagements, like I'm sure you did. Uh -huh. You know, the year was looking great. I was going to be oh, traveling gosh. to South America and Africa and all these places. And then, you know, people had to, you know, cancel things right. and things went virtual. And I remember one day I was sitting at my computer. I was getting ready to log on to a meeting mm -hmm. because all of my speaking engagements got canceled. So I was able to study the Bible just to study it. I wasn't right. studying to speak. Right. Uh, but all my speaking engagements, they got canceled or they went virtual. And I was sitting at my computer 
I went on Instagram because I was going to just, you know, check comments and respond to people and get started with my day. But I caught a glimpse of my, my news feed and I saw a friend who made a post about this huge virtual conference she was speaking at with like, mm-hmm. it was like a huge women's conference. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. But then there was like two or three other friends who were speaking at the conference. And then I kept scrolling and there was like more people speaking at this conference. And I was like, where am I? Why wasn't I invited? Wow. And that thing got me. Damn. Like it really, really got me to the point where I went to log on to the video conference and I had to turn the camera off because I was still scrolling on Instagram. Like I was literally looking like, why are all these people speaking at this conference? Like these are all my friends. It was right. basically like the host who I knew mm. invited everybody we mutually knew except for me. And Ooh. I got so upset and I was so hurt about that thing. Wow. And as I was starting to look at it, I was like, why wasn't I invited? Why was I left out? Why was I overlooked? I was asking all these why questions. Mm -hmm. And I heard the Holy Spirit ask me a different question. He said, Nona, why does it matter? Mm. Mm. Why does it matter? Mm. And I had never thought about that before. Like whenever my insecurity was triggered, I would always be like, why them, not me? Mm. Why her, not me? Mm. Like, why was I left out? Mm. But when the Holy Spirit said, why does it matter? It made me have to really do some internal look at myself to be like, yeah, why did this just bother me the way that it did? Mm. And as I prayed about that thing, Anthony, like the Holy Spirit said, no, no, you're insecure. Mm. And I was like, I'm not insecure. Like this is me literally having a conversation with God. I'm not insecure. I preach on, you know, uh, finding your identity in you, Lord. I preach on, you know, the fact that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm not insecure. And the Holy Spirit said, Nona, see, you think insecurity is about not liking, you know, the way you look or not thinking you have enough money. He said, insecurity has nothing to do with that Mm. and everything to do with what your identity is secured to. And he said, your identity is secured to people's approval. Mm -hmm. And that's why you feel insecure. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, like that's what launched the inquisition. That's what I call it. It kind of launched a self-inquisition to be like, what is going on with me? And that was the genesis of the book. The genesis of the book. I've been there several times. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, dang, I talk about money. I I talk about this, I talk about that, you know, and I'll be seeing all these conferences and I'm like, I wasn't asked to speak. Exactly. You know, I'll, I mean, I have one of the best shows in this area Mm -hmm. when it comes to finances and stuff. And I'm like, well, how come I wasn't invited there? Mm -hmm. And I've even went deeper, which I felt convicted about because I was like, they're not even on my my stage. Okay, let me let me let me let you me know? help you with this. <laughs> All right, so here's here's where it got real deep for me. Uh-huh. This is where God really started convicting me is when that whole thing happened. I started going to the speakers. Like, yes, I've done the right? same thing. Because I was like, well, how many followers? Right, you who's following you? Don't even you? Have the blue like, you don't even. And then I was <laughs> like, okay, I went to their website. I was like, well, where are they speaking? Like, I just started going through this whole process and what I was doing, mm-hmm. and I talk about this in the book is I was using them as the measuring stick for my value. Like I was setting them as the benchmark. Cause, cause what this is, this is one of the insights I had as I was writing this book. Comparison can show up in one of two ways. Comparison can lead to inspiration, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and the very definition of inspiration, if you look it up, is to take in air. Mm. to breathe in air. So mm-hmm. what inspiration does is mm-hmm. it gives you life. Mm-hmm. You see somebody doing well, you're like, that's it. All day. Boom, I'm, that's where I'm going. All day. But the opposite of inspiration is expiration. And expiration is when you exhale out. And we think about when you exhale out, life is leaving you. Ooh. And so when you when you see somebody who you feel like well, why are they doing better than me? Like, yeah. why why am I not where they are? Right. It creates toxic comparison and that expires you. And so you start to feel fatigued and you start to question your worth and you start to think, you know, well, why why them, not me? And and you just end in this like spiral of just, you know, inadequacy and I don't measure up and why. And so that's literally why I wrote the book, man, because I know what it's like, frankly, to have everything 
and still feel like you don't measure up. Mm. I know what it's like to see someone else succeed and feel like you failed. Mm. That's painful. Mm -hmm. It's not that you've done anything, mm -hmm. but it's because your identity is secured to an insecure foundation, something that's not stable, something that is, uh, it, can't, it can't carry the weight of who you are. Yeah. And so you start to feel like, man, nothing I do matters. Yeah. And that's a lie. It is a huge lie. And you know what was so funny is, sis, I, I, I confess to doing that, right? I, I, I'm like you. I went to their pages. <laughs> I, mean, I, I even got so toxic mentally in my head. Like, he don't even look good. Like, I, <laughs> I got bigger muscles than him. You know what I'm saying? My beard is bad. Like, I, and literally, when I got done doing all of that, I'll never forget. I went to, the, I went to my um, refrigerator to get something to drink because I was so upset. I needed some water. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting right there, and God said, you, you need some help. Mm -hmm. Because if you think that you're better mm -hmm. than my mm -hmm. son, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you think you're better than your brother, yeah. that is a you problem, not a them problem. Mm. And, and, then, and then I felt, I was like, what do you mean? He was like, I gave him gifts and talents the same way I gave you gifts and talents. He is using, she is using their gifts and talents. How about you use yours even better? Mm. Focus on your lane. And I was like, he's right. And I was like, yo, and, and, and I am a, uh, you know, I'm a huge believer in, in therapy. And I called my therapist from BetterHelp. And I said, yo, I need to talk this through because this is not healthy for me. Yeah. And I don't want to be distracted. I, yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't want to like always looking at what are they doing? What is he doing? What is she doing? Yep. And I identified that, hey, if I am going to progress, I need to be inspired by their success, Correct. not expired. So th this is so rich. Um, there's a, a gentleman, he's an artist, a painter. Okay. His name is Edgar Degas. He okay. made such a powerful point. He said, painting is easy mm -hmm. when you don't know how to do it, mm -hmm. but it's very difficult when you do. Ooh. And what he was saying is... Ooh. When, when you don't know something, mm -hmm. you can approach it with a level of irreverence. Like, you know, true. we're going to like, you know, paint with friends, like just slapping something together. Look, y'all, look what All I right. did. But when you are an artist, mm. you take your time. Like you start with a vision in your head. You don't just start slapping paint. No, you have a vision in your head. Yeah. And, and so an artist, when they finish their art, mm -hmm. to them it is perfect. Mm -hmm. And and one of the lies that I think we experience is that we believe perfection is in the eye of the beholder, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. Perfection is not in the eye of the beholder. Perfection is the, in the eye of the creator. Yeah. And the reason why that's different is because to your point, when we see somebody else, right, we look at them and we can judge them. Because we can be like, oh, I'm better than you. Man, you ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. But that's because we're the beholder. What we don't realize is the creator yeah, yeah. decided they were perfect. Ooh. The creator made them perfect. Like God didn't God didn't create you and half-bake you. Right. Like he wasn't like, I'll let him finish over the next 30 years. No, right. no, no. When he created you, yeah, yeah. he endowed you with every gift, every yeah. purpose, the potential that he wanted you to have so that you could carry out the perfect will that he had for you. And this is where the lie of comparison can create toxicity is we start to behold each other and judge each other and compare ourselves mm -hmm. against each other. But you can't compare perfection with perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are each perfect in the eyes of our creator. But the lie will tell you, like, no, oh, I got to do this. I got to get, yeah. I got a story for you. So you know, and I'm being super transparent right yeah. now. Yeah. Black women are known for our curves, right? Absolutely. Yeah. My so, God. So here's, here's the thing, though. <laughs> My mom mm -hmm. has these, like, voluptuous breasts, right? Okay. But she has a flat booty. Okay. My dad, of course, has a flat chest, but he had, like, a really nice booty. Okay. I got my mom's butt in my dad's chest. <laughs> like somehow it got reversed, right? I did not get the curves. So what I did was being a black woman, uh -huh. I was like, I want to be more secure in how I look. Right. Because in the eye of the beholder, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not perfect because I don't have curves. Right. So I found out who the Kardashian's doctor was. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get me a little 
For real? Little booty. Like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to okay. get me a booty. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. I prayed about that thing. I was like, Lord, I want you to like, you know, protect me during the surgery and everything. God said, if I wanted you to have a booty, I would have given you one. I didn't give you a booty to protect your ego. I heard this. Now, listen, I heard the spirit say this. I still get on the plane, head to L.A. Right, right, right. In the plane, the Holy Spirit said, if I wanted you to have a booty, I would have given you one. I should have parachuted out of the plane then <laughs> and saved the tens of thousands of dollars that it cost me to get that procedure. But when I tell you, six months later, my booty was gone. What? Dissolved. Now, why am I telling you this story? Because so many of us do things like that because we're trying to live up to what the beholder has decided is perfection. So we're spending senseless money. Uh, we're climbing corporate ladders. We're getting into relationships that we shouldn't be in. Um, you notice that whenever a woman gets in a relationship, she's the first one to make it public. You go to the dude's page and he ain't even say nothing about her. She's right. nowhere to be found. Right, 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 right. But we do all these things because we're trying to live up to other people's definition of perfection. And that is the toxic power of comparison. It will have you out here spending all this money for no reason. So if you could go back, let's just, let's just keep it a buck. Let's keep it a buck. If you kept the booty. If, and let's say if you had the booty today, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Which says you're beautiful. I mean, I, well, you're very you know, kind. You're very you know kind. What I'm saying? If she's happily married, <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's my brother. I'm just saying my sister is beautiful. But let's say, let's say, let's say if, you, if you still had the booty today, yeah. and then if I ask you this question, would you go back, right, mm -hmm. to that day, mm -hmm. would you still have the booty today? Man, I would keep my money. Seriously. Really? I would keep, if I knew then what I know now. Right, 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 right. Like, forget the fact that it dissolved. And the reason right. it dissolved is because I'm, I work out high yeah. intensity. So, and the doctor told me, he said, listen, now that you had this procedure, you really can't work out as intensely as you do because the fat will melt away. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. I went back to, to running and it, it, it melted away. But, but that's, that's totally opposite, is it? I mean, no. I hear people like, if they get, respectfully, how I say this, <laughs> when they get the, 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 the procedure that lifts and gives them more up top. But it's a diff it's, it's different because that's a different material. Oh. See, for the BBL, it's fat. It's fat. Oh, you're burning fat. You're burning fat. So, but but for real though, know, knowing then what I know now, uh -huh. man, I would have saved my Oh, no. I would have saved my money because I'm at the place now yeah. where like I am not trying to live up to, to anyone people. else's idea of perfection. Like I know so who cool. I am for real, for real. That is so cool. And so I'm cool. Yo, sis, this is so <laughs> good. One of the things that got me into the gym mm -hmm. wasn't the right reason to get into the gym. Then you're like 98% of people, so it's okay. Yeah. It's all good. A, a woman said, I am skinny and ugly. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I wasn't prepared for that. You just took like a left turn. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yes, I tried to holler at a chick and she was like, you are skinny and ugly. And, and she said, you need to hit the gym. And I was like, is that why I'm not, I don't have like a woman? So I'll never forget my boy was a, you know, he was mm -hmm. big. He was like, yo, bro, you need to go hire a personal trainer. I was making $38,000 as a youth pastor. That's like not even, what, two twenty two hundred dollars a month? Mm -mm. I, I went and I hired a personal trainer and I could not afford him. I was paying my personal mm -hmm. trainer so I can look good over paying my light bill. Yeah. I would come home from working out and I would have candles or have the blinds up during the day. Then at nighttime, I would sleep with candles because I cared more yeah. about looking good to please Correct. them than to pay and handle my responsibilities. Yeah. Now I'm a gym freak only because I've, I've evolved and learned yes. because I care about my health, yes. right? But in the beginning, I went into making bad financial decisions mm -hmm. because I was paying off my debt, right? But then I wasn't handling my responsibilities mm -hmm. because I was like, yo, I want a woman and I don't want to be skinny. And it's like, yo, I, I need I need to have mm -hmm. some muscles. So I'm drinking four protein shakes a oh day. My gosh. Oh I'm, my I'm, gosh. I'm, 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 I'm doing all the supplements that, oh, I need to get thicker and bigger and stronger. And I grew. Mm. Oh man, I was thick. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got so thick that a woman said, you're like a penguin. You don't even have a neck. What? 
So you need to slim down. Uh, so now see? I go from getting thick to now I'm going the opposite way. Yeah. I'm trying to get back to being slimmer. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, I was like, this is an emotional roller coaster. Correct. Because one person wants this, one person says this, this, yes. that, that. Now I'm trying to please everyone else. Yes. And then I wasn't saying, you know what? Anthony, what 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 do you desire? Yes. So in the book, one of the um one of the threads throughout the book uh -huh. is the story of Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. and here's the thing. So if you know anything about the Bible, some people do, some people don't. Mm -hmm. uh, most people know about David. Yep. You know, King David. King David. Many people know about Saul, yep. how he was, you know, insecure and how yep. he felt like David was a threat. Right. But Jonathan was Saul's son. Mm -hmm. And there's something really interesting. Um, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 14 where we meet Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Jonathan goes and he fights the Philistines by himself. Like he has no army, no weapons. He fights them by himself. And he makes this statement. He says, Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Mm. Now, at the time that he's going to fight these Philistines by himself, Saul, his dad, was in a whole other city, chilling under a pomegranate tree with 600 soldiers. Like, he was chilling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason I'm saying that is because I studied Jonathan's life. Because mm -hmm. I was like, and he's not, you know, all throughout the Bible, but I was like, how is it that this dude who had no weapons, no army, was willing to place his faith in God to the point where he went to fight the enemies of God by himself. And this same dude was not threatened by David, who frankly would have taken his kingship, not his father's. Mm. If you think about it, Saul mm. said, he said, don't you realize that David is going to take your kingdom? Mm -hmm. But Jonathan was so secure in who God said he was that he wasn't threatened by David. Mm. And the, the reason why I say that in light of your story is, People's opinions change. Absolutely. All the time. All the time. But what God says about you never changes, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. But the thing we have to do is instead of placing our identity in a future self, mm -hmm. we have to accept who we are today. So in your case, right, you're like, man, I'm going to get in this gym. I'm going to spend all this money because in the future, I'm going to be fine. I'm right. going to be this. Right. And then you get to that place and now somebody else is like, that's not enough because now you look crazy. Right. Jonathan didn't set his sights on being the future king. That's why he wasn't threatened by David. He wasn't like, man, if, if David, if people like David, he's going to take the kingdom from me. He was like, no, I am cool being Saul's son because that's who I am today. Yes, yes. And if you don't like me, mm -hmm. who I am today, mm -hmm. God bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to fight these Philistines, right. whether you're with me or not. And I think that's the level of confidence that God wants us to have, where it doesn't matter if people approve, applaud, people singing our praises or not. Mm -hmm. We're cool with who God has created us to be today, not in the future, today. She preaching. <laughs> and, and, and you see why she, she has a church. Her and her husband have an amazing church. <laughs> um, and we'll make sure to give y'all her information um, so that way you can connect to via church-wise, book-wise, all the type of stuff. <laughs> Uh, real, real quick before I get to this next question, yeah. do you think? Because you're a pastor, so I, I believe you got to have a spiritual advisor in your life. Oh, for sure. What is your thoughts, especially in this area of comparison, for people right now, um, who are saying, you know what, she's making sense. You know what, Anthony making sense. I, I do that. Do you think therapy is important? If you are always battling with the whole, like getting your book for sure is important, sure, right? Yeah. And we're going to link her book in today's show notes. Get it right now. It's on pre-sale. It is important um, because I'm telling you, man, it, it's it's amazing. I got yeah. a chance to read, to read the book. I'm telling you, it's life changing. But then at the same time, do you think that people need to talk to someone to guide them through yes. why they're thinking this way? Like, why do you think... Therapy is important to help us kill the comparison game. So for me, it, it's 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 like this. There's a saying, thoughts lead to actions. Mm -hmm. Actions lead to habits. Habits lead to character. Character leads to destiny. So, I remember hearing that um, at a conference once, and I was just like, man, that makes so much sense. Thoughts lead to actions. Actions, habits, habits, character, character, destiny. Until one day I thought about that thing. I was like, that's not true. Because I don't act on everything I think. Mm -hmm. So thoughts don't lead to actions. Mm -hmm. 
Thoughts only lead to actions when I believe that thought to be true. Mm. And what therapy does is it helps you to excavate what you believe. Mm. Because if you look at your life, like your life is simply the, the summation of the thoughts you believed to be true because you acted on them. Mm -hmm. At some point, we have to look at what we believe. You know, there are women who end up with horrible men. Why? Because they believe that they're not worth more. They can say that they believe they're worth more, but it's your actions that prove that you don't. There are people who say, you know, yes, I am financially disciplined. I'm going to get out of debt this year. Mm -hmm. But then their actions don't line up with that. Why? Because there are beliefs making them think you will never have more. You better enjoy life right now because this is how it's always going to be. Facts. Therapy helps you to excavate what you believe because once you change what you believe, it doesn't matter what the thought is. You now have the power to change your action because you've changed what you believe. So for me, that's the power of therapy. And I talk about that a lot in the book. Yeah, I even give a couple resources on how to find a therapist because yeah. I think that's important. Yo, listen. So two things. We're going to drop her book in there uh, in, in today's show notes um, and definitely read it so you can get some understanding on how to, to pick the right therapist for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then two, check out my friends over there at BetterHelp. You know, right now they're giving my tribe 15% off their first month. I would encourage you, lock in for one month. Lock in for at least two sessions. I see my therapist two times a month uh, because I, I, am more, I am more on the inspired side from, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at other people's stuff. But I, I'm going to be real. Sometimes that flesh rise up and the expire side tends to come out. And I'm always walking through there, walking with my therapist to understand, okay, why did this come up? Why did this thought come up? And I feel so good about it. Like I, I look forward to going to my therapist. I'll be writing down notes, y'all. I'll be like, all right, I felt this, I thought this, and I literally give it to her. And we meet every other week, virtually, from my office upstairs, um, and we just have a real good conversation. And so uh, you invest money into shoes, into purses, into luxurious stuff that is not really adding value to your life, to your mind, and helping you be healthy. Invest, you know, into your brain, into your mind, because if you can keep this right, all the other stuff is going to come. And so I'm going to drop BetterHelp's information in today's show notes. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash BetterHelp, um, and uh, you'll see that. They'll give you a discount immediately, because let's be real. You know, if, if you're like, you have Nona, who has everything, and a, a beautiful family, an amazing husband, I mean, some, what some will consider a dream job working for Meta, who owns Facebook, you know, she's in offices with one of the most wealthiest people in the world. She's traveling the world on stages. I'm doing great things. And we still battle with these things. But we're putting the people and the things in place to help us proceed forward. And I think two of those things you got to do today is, number one, get her book. OK, go order it, get it on pre-sale, get it. Number two, get some help. I mean, and there's, and, and there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what, let me talk to someone. Because for me, shoot, my, my wife, baby girl, if you're watching this right now, you better be seeing a the therapist. I think that's sexy as heck if you already see it. I'm like, girl, come here. Come here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, girl, you know what I'm saying? Give me a kiss. Give me some... Give me some sugar, Mwah. you know what I'm saying? Mwah, girl, well, you know what I'm saying? You see a therapist, girl, you better come and give me some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but real talk, go to anthonyneal.com forward slash better help. Um, and I think uh, you, you will thank me 30 days from today that you were able to do that. No, no. So it's like there. Let's be honest. There's a lot of self-help books out there, mm -hmm. a lot of books on therapy, and, and that there are some 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 good books out there on insecurities. Mm -hmm. um, um, actually, one of my friends, um, we have a mutual friend. I wrote a book on uh, comparison as well. But what makes yours so different? Like, why? I know the answer to this question. Mm -hmm. but I don't want the world to know the answer to this question. Like, what what differentiates your book from theirs? I mean, the reality is I've read so many good books on insecurity. Yeah. I have. I've read books about, you know, feeling like you're addicted to approval and all those things. And as great as they are and as wise as the authors are, I didn't experience freedom. Mm. And I didn't experience mm. freedom because what I came to realize is you can memorize all the scriptures about how great you are. You can memorize affirmations about how great you are. But... 
what you know in your mind doesn't matter. It's what you believe in your heart. So good. And so really what this book is is about, it's about changing what we believe in our heart. And, and one of the fundamental things that I'm trying to equip people to understand is that even though in our society we downplay humility, like we talk all the time about, you know, go get yours, you know, do this, be pump yourself up. Humility is a power. It is. It it's is. a power. And it's not... It's not about degrading yourself. It's not about thinking lowly of yourself because that's actually not the definition of humility. Mm. Um, humility is about fully occupying the lane that God has given to you. Mm. And I go into a lot of detail in that in this book because that was a turning point in my journey to freedom from insecurity is when I was able to truly be humble. Not, you know, how we kind of have like the false humility. Oh, you know, God is good all the time. No, like literally... This is the lane God has given to me, and I want you to be successful mm. because that's not my lane. Mm. I'm not threatened by your lane because I'm occupying what God has given to me. And whether a person has a million followers, 10 million followers, 3,000 followers, whatever it is on Instagram, that doesn't threaten me. Yeah. That's not my lane. Right. So that's part of what's different about this book is it really is focusing on humility and giving people a blueprint on how to get free for real. All right, without going throughout the whole book, yeah. give me like two things. Like what are the two things in your book that we're going to learn on how to really get set free from that? Well, um, the first thing is I'm teaching people how to recognize insecurity Ooh. because, you know, we'll be quick to downplay it. We will. Like, oh, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm not. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy for you. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. But I'm teaching people how to recognize it because the thing is you cannot get free from what you don't admit. Mm, you can't. So and, you know, for me, that was one of my first recognitions is like the reason why this has been plaguing me the majority of my life is because I was always the one who was like, I love the Lord. I love people's success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I was also really insecure. So teaching people how to recognize it, um, I think, is really, really important. But then also helping people understand, like, how to how to release it. Yeah. How do you release it? Like once you recognize like, okay, yes, I am insecure. Yes, my identity is, is secure to some insecure foundations. How do I then release it? And one of the keys there is through what I call the power of reframing. So good. Okay. So okay. reframing is if you've ever worked in like politics or marketing, you'll know that your frame is the way that you view something. So, so as an example, let's say that you're trying to sell low fat yogurt. Okay. All right. Let's say that the yogurt is is 80% fat, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. What you're going to say is it's 20% fat free. The reason you would say that as opposed to it's 80% fat mm -hmm. is because when you say it's 20% fat free, mm -hmm. now we're like, oh, I feel better about it. Right, right, right. So right. what reframing does is it helps you to see an issue from a different vantage point. So, so when I see somebody killing it and I'm like, man, I would love to be where they are. Right. At the end of the day, the reframe is, I wonder what I can learn from what they're doing. Ooh, no, that is so good. As opposed to, oh, why can't I be? It's like, no, no, what can I learn from what they're doing? Man, right. that's really cool. Right. That helps you to get free. It's the reframe for me. <laughs> I'm sure it, 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 it is. Mm -hmm. Because I had to do that. All right, bet. He's winning. Let me hit him up. Um, yo, bro, bro, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yes. How are you doing this? Yes. I see you winning. I'm happy for you. Cause I genuinely am, and but I just want to learn. Yeah, you know. And I think sometimes people have have a hard time of that mm -hmm. because they feel as if well, I'm asking them to 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 teach me. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and when people ask me that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this dude want to learn something. I, let me see. Mm -hmm. And if I teach it to him, and they go out there and do it, he he or she was in the right heart. Mm -hmm. If I give it to them and they don't do it, yeah, it, it was a, uh, mm. mm -hmm. they just, they were a little, well, I won't say that. No, so. <laughs> but, but you're right. I mean, God gives us, I think that he gives, it's just like, okay, so working out, we both work out, right? Yeah. The one thing people have to understand is you don't build strength mm -hmm. by lifting what is comfortable. Mm -hmm. You build strength by lifting what is uncomfortable repeatedly exactly. until your muscle fibers break and then yep. they grow back Ooh. stronger, right? Jeez. Well, God will give you so many tests mm -hmm. in order to increase your spiritual muscle strength. Facts. And the way that he does it is he comes right for your insecurity. So like a 
one of the stories I tell in the book. So I got invited to an, an influencer gathering. Mm -hmm. But the way that it happened was the host texted me and was like, hey, we want you to come to this thing. Here's a link to register. We hope you make it. So I click on the link and I look and I see all these incredible people. And I was like, oh man, yeah, I cannot believe I was invited to come. This is great. Yeah. But as I'm scrolling through all the invitees, I don't see my name. I'm sitting here like, wait, wait, wait. So I was invited, but I'm not even listed. Mm. And it made me think, well, man, maybe I was just an afterthought. And I started to like feel yeah. all the insecurity get kicked up. And, and, and then though, this is when I was already kind of moving down the path to getting free from comparison. The Holy Spirit said, here's what I want you to do. Look at that list and see who else is missing. Mm. And I want you to make sure they're invited. Wow. And I was like, that's so good. Okay. So I reached out to the host and I was like, do you mind if I invite these people who are missing? And right. they were like, yeah, do it. Yeah. I reached out to them. Half the people were like, oh, my name's not on the list. I don't think I'm supposed to come. The other half were like, oh, yeah, I was invited to that, but, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it. Right. And that half of people, I was like, wait, wait. You weren't on the list. Not on, I was like, you ain't see my name on the list. You don't even <laughs> tell me about it. I was like, so you saw I wasn't on the list. But then the Holy Spirit was like, it's not about that. Mm. It's about you learning that every opportunity you have is an opportunity to be a blessing to other people. So and once you get that in your mind, you're no longer going to be insecure yeah. because everything I have is meant to be a conduit for God's grace. So good. And it ended up where I couldn't even go to the event. For real? So I invited all these people to come. And you couldn't even go. And I couldn't even go. But that was a test for me Yeah, yeah. so that God could help me see that I was getting free. <sighs> Man, this, this, <laughs> what is, this is good. Like, and it really, and I hope you all are listening and I hope that you're, you're learning something and I hope is, is, is convicting you to, to get a book. Uh, because this is going to set you free. You know, since you work in the social media space, mm -hmm. right, I, I, I got to ask this question. Every year, I take two weeks off of social media. Mm -hmm. Two weeks in July, two weeks in December. Because I do believe sometimes I need to unplug, right? For sure. And when I say unplug, if you would have asked me five years ago when I started this, I would say I would I would have unplugged. I would have said I unplug because sometimes social media is toxic, right? Mm. It, it it makes me insecure. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, I say I'm un unplugging from social media because sometimes when I see something, I make it toxic. Mm. And so sometimes I need to step away to just recalibrate my brains and my eyes and get myself right. But then when you ask, like the older generation, oh, yeah. they say social media is the devil. <laughs> that we shouldn't be on social media. I even went to a, a conference recently and this particular person on this particular stage said that you should not be on social media. Mm -hmm. Pay someone else to be on social media because it's not healthy for your brain. Mm -hmm. Like social media is the problem. And I was like, <laughs> wait, wait. So... You're good enough to not be on it, but you're good enough to pay somebody else to <laughs> consume the toxic on your behalf? Like, what? Does that even make right, sense? Right, right. So with you working with the premier company in social media, mm -hmm. right? Um, what is your thoughts? Like, do you believe that social media is a reason why some of us have comparison issues? We have toxic mental issues. We, we battle depression. Do you believe that these companies, these social media outlets, I won't name them because I don't want to get in no trouble. <laughs> Do you think they are the reason why a lot of us are getting depressed, suicide thoughts, stuff like that? Well, here's what I'll say. I believe that insecurity predates social media. Dude. And I know that because before we were on these platforms, there were people in our office building, people in our church, people in our neighborhood, in our family that we felt like we didn't measure up to. Mm -hmm. Like before we were on these platforms, we thought so-and-so thought they were better than us. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt like, you know, so-and-so on our job was getting ahead of us and it wasn't fair. 
Um, I believe that it's not the platforms that are making us insecure. I believe that they are exposing insecurity that was already there. And we have to be careful that we don't conflate that which exposes insecurity with that which causes insecurity. And that's why I was careful earlier to really differentiate between the two types of comparison, right. inspiration versus expiration. Yeah. Because the same person can look at a post yeah. and be inspired. Yes. Another person can look at it and be expired. Right, it right. really is a question of the human condition and what's right. happening in our heart. Right. Um, and so I, I don't believe that the platforms are creating insecurity. I do believe that they're exposing what's already there and that that's part of the reason why I wrote this book because it's like, look, you should be able to go on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and Twitter and, and, and be right. good. Yeah, you yeah. should be able to, but there's something on the inside of us mm -hmm. that is causing us to see what other people are doing and compare ourselves to it in such a way that we feel we don't measure up. Mm -hmm. And so that's a fundamental problem. Mm -hmm. It's not the platform. There's a condition on the inside of us that we've got to get free from. And let's just say, all right, cool. So I agree with you that these amazing apps, because these apps have, have made me money, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. uh, let's be real. They're, they're not the devil. If you use it wisely and effectively, and, and it's good, make money and enjoy life, mm -hmm. you know? If if someone is going on a particular app, mm -hmm. right, and they're they're starting to sense some mm -hmm. comparison, what should they do? Unfollow. So here's the thing. Uh -huh. There are so many features, and I'll speak about Instagram just as an example since I know okay. that one so well. Right. You can unfollow, you can mute. Yeah. Uh, There's so many things you can do to not see content that right. triggers your insecurity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if you look at my social, I follow a very small number of people compared to my followers. Mm -hmm. And the reason is I am incredibly intentional mm -hmm. about only following people that I either know mm -hmm. or people that inspire me. That's so The good. moment, I'm telling you, the moment I start to be like, unfollow, yeah. literally, yeah. because I have to protect my mind and my peace and my heart. Yeah. And frankly, it's not that person's fault. Yeah. There's something on the inside of me. And yeah. so I say unfollow. And you know what's so funny is? I do that. Mm -hmm. Like I think I follow maybe like 800 people out of the you know, nearly mm -hmm. 300,000 people just on um, Instagram. And and I get DMs like, yo, did I do something? And I'll be, I'll be like, dude. And then there are, I'll be honest, there are some people right now I just mute because yeah. I know they'll give me a headache if I unfollowed them. Right, right, <laughs> right. But thank they'll God take for it mute. Personal. Thank God for mute. Thank God for mute. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, it ain't personal. I don't have nothing. I'm protecting against you. myself. Correct. Right. It's just like, I just don't. Some of your posts just doesn't doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and here's the truth: some of us were in a certain season when we followed you, and then we've really we've right. grown out of that season or that season changed. Yeah. And so it doesn't even, it's nothing like I'm happy for you over there, but boom. So I, I, I want to say this, man, go unfollow some people. I literally do it maybe like once a quarter. Mm -hmm. I'll just yeah. go through the social media accounts, well, specifically Instagram, because my team runs Facebook and I, I spend a lot of my time on YouTube and Instagram. Um, and I just got on the TikTok and I, I, <laughs> I specifically said, all right, do not follow some people. On well, and we, but we have to carry that out to real life. And and that's Ooh, the thing. Like so there are there are people in our life who yeah, yeah. expire us Ooh. because they're dealing with their own insecurity. And so I have, listen, I know people who they always come around with the expensive bags. They always got the expensive shoes. They always yeah. got the expensive car. They always got this. But at the end of the day, it's like you're not really adding anything to my life. Like mm. all you're doing is making me be like, man, maybe I should get the bag. But let me tell you something. So what I do, this is just off topic. Mm -hmm. Whenever I feel the urge to go buy a bag, mm -hmm. I find out how much it is and I buy the stock. Absolutely. Because my thing is this, when I see you wearing the bag, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, thank you. Right. As opposed to, I want that bag. Right. <laughs> so again, it's a reframe. reframe. It's a reframe. It's like, I'm not mad at you yeah. for buying that car because I own stock in the company. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Like, Absolutely. We're not in competition. You're okay. actually blessing me. Talk. Everything you get is a blessing to me. Talk, talk, <laughs> talk, talk. Oh my gosh. Listen, there's some of y'all um, who are watching this and you need to mute some people mm -hmm. and you need to unfollow some people. in real life too um yeah in real life and i want to encourage you spend some time today you know just go through your instagram followers and unfollow some people you know you got exes that you don't need to be following mm. you have you have some haters who you know who laugh in your face mm. 
but literally only following you on Instagram just to talk about you. And um, you have you have past situations to where it's not a negative separation as far as in employment, friends, old friends, family members, ex family members that you need to mute and unfollow because this is all about just creating peace and clarity up here so you can kill the comparison and you can progress forward and move forward and build something. Um, so I, I definitely want to encourage you to 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 do that. Um, one question that is totally off subject. <laughs> I asked this before the show. So would you be in a social media space? Should we, the world, take this whole metaverse thing seriously? Absolutely. For real. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, like I mentioned, it's... So the, the metaverse now uh -huh. is essentially where social media was early 2000s. It's just one of those things that's like out there. People right. kind of kind of know about it, but they're not really sure about it. Um, you know, I have an Oculus headset, mm -hmm. which makes sense since our company owns Oculus. Well, but yeah. I mean, just, just going through the worlds and meeting people, you would be shocked. As, as just one example, a uh, good friend of mine, I give him a shout out all the time because he's amazing. His yeah. name is DJ Soto. Yeah. Uh, he pioneered VR church. And wow. one of the blessings of what he did is he worked for a mega church for many years. Right. When he launched his church in VR, he said, Nona, it was the first time I ever had an atheist come to church. Because he's in this space with people from all over the world who have all types of different beliefs. Mm -hmm. An atheist isn't coming to First Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be like, what are they doing in there? No. Mm -hmm. But they will be like, what are all these people gathered here for mm -hmm. in, you know, alt space? What are they here for? Now he has people who were once atheists serving as deacons. Yeah. So it's a thing. Yo, listen, DJ Soto, I'll be hitting you up. <laughs> uh, I'm serious, because I want to learn it. I want I want to put my show in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And I, one thing I've learned, especially for for black people, all people too, but like minorities, we tend to be the last to get into things because we're scared to to take chances. And I was like, no, nah, I'm about to do it. Like, I, I'm, I'm about to go learn it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take this thing serious because I think the metaverse, like you said, if you get into it now mm -hmm. and, and learn and make mistakes, 10 years from now, that could be a easy million dollar situation. Oh, for yeah. You. Oh, yeah. And so um, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about it. And I was like, oh, no. But you're so right. I remember, what, how old am I, 38? So it was... I put me so 20 years ago, AOL was the truth. That's it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's wow. Yep, 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 yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know, now it's, we have internet that yeah. is just killing yeah. dial up mm -hmm. internet, you know? Um, <laughs> Facebook was only for college people, yep. mm -hmm. and then it killed MySpace, and then it took over this, and then boom. I remember when we didn't have cell phones, and I'm like, mm -hmm. is Metaverse this what it, mm -hmm. it is metaverse that and do i need to get do i have the opportunity now to get into that to mm -hmm. be in the future to reap the rewards from it so well because it's it's fully immersive like that that's the thing that people don't understand is wow. right now what we have on our apps and our devices is basically like a two-dimensional experience right because you can kind of see it it's tactile so you mm -hmm. kind of touch it but metaverse is fully immersive so you hear you see you touch you man I, i've done workouts with people in the metaverse, people in other sides of the country, you know, doing Pilates. With the Oculus? Oh, yeah, doing Pilates and, mm-hmm, wow. yeah. Wow, listen, um, some of y'all probably think, what is this Oculus? What is this metaverse? <laughs> I'm going to link uh, the Oculus below. My brother-in-law turned me on to it about a year ago. Um, and it is, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing. And so I'll drop it in there. It's just a little headset you put on your eyes and you go into this 3D world and it literally feels mm -hmm. legit. It's scary to me. I ain't gonna lie, because I'm like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm out on the road, can I travel, you know, and see my girl, you know, hey, baby. And I'm on a head, it's scary, yo. But I'm I'm excited about the future, yeah. and I'm excited. Mm -hmm. But um, where can people learn more about you? Um, we're gonna link the, the book, um, you know, your church, if they're ever in the Florida, what sure. what city is it? Gainesville. Gainesville, yeah, yeah. yeah. So where can they find out more about you? NonaJones.com, um, not Nora Jones. Yes. I've had people confuse me with her. I'm not a Grammy award-winning jazz singer. NonaJones.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, at Nona, not Nora. Nona, and we'll make sure to drop her information <laughs> in today's show notes, and man, if you're ever in the Gainesville area, go check them out. Um, they are doing some amazing things out there. But most importantly today, uh, number one, get a book. 
you know, it comes out within, you know, a few weeks. Um, and also, I really want to encourage you to uh, consider getting some therapy, you know. Get the book and also get some therapy. Read the book while you're getting therapy. It'll be actually a good exercise so while you're reading. Hey, I was reading this great book that's, you know, New York Times bestseller. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and she she gave me some thoughts, and I want I want to walk through these th thoughts with you. Like I I just think that's a perfect combination, especially going to the second part of the year. Man, some of you all haven't reached your goals because of your mindset. Some of you are not doing what you really want to do because you're comparing and and you're having some insecurities. Let's walk and let's walk through that right now. But the key thing while walking through it is you got to talk through it as well. So let's do it, man. But yo. We gotta go. Man, I could do a show with you for like two hours. <laughs> next time. This is Nona Jones. Not Nora, Nona <laughs> Jones. We'll see you on the next show, you guys. Peace out. <laughs>